Hello everyone, this is Michelle. I'm back with another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about my biggest gripe about the Reconstructionist community and I want to point blank make this clear before I begin. This is not an attack on the Reconstructionist community. This is an assessment of what I have encountered in the 16 years that I have believed that gods like Odin and Thor and Sif and all these deities exist and that they are distinct, um, distinct, um, entities. And so, uh, that's what I am doing in this video. So, if you like this video, please uh, like, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. So, in today's video, as I said, this is a critique of the Reconstructionist community. And I sure as heck has heard it from other people. So, Reconstructionists and heathenry are not the only ones who are guilty of this. It's guilty in Hellenism and uh, Kemeticism and all these other places that attempt to develop some form of community. It's prevalent in the atheist community and the Christian community in communities. As long as you got people together, there's going to be assholes everywhere. So, um, so I have, so one of the big things that happened last year was my mother passed away. And I did a video yesterday where I talked about, um, I talked about, um, you know, getting her urn and then getting her ashes and, and basically have, you know, basically having to try to explain to people, hey, I need this day off because of blah, blah, blah. Um, which reminds me that I do not want to go through that anytime soon. So, with that out of the way, um, so when I was in my mid-twenties, I had been forced to leave Wicca because, or not, sorry, I couldn't openly practice my religion of Wicca because my mother had developed an anti-Wiccan attitude even though she had bought me all these books on Wicca. So, um, so, um, oh, I hate doing that. Itching, itching and not having a back scratcher to do it. So, um, I was looking around and I discovered that there was an entire Reconstructionist community. Now, I mentioned in my video that I, the first video I did of 2021, about devotional polytheism and American gods. And so, um, I, I sort of discovered this community and I thought, okay, great. These are open-minded. These are people that, you know, that are here for community and companionship and all this other wonderful stuff. And I should have no problem finding a form of Reconstructionism that I can actually practice because my mother had clear, made it clear at the time there was only Wicca and witchcraft that she was against. So, um, yeah. So, um... So I went and I learned about Kemeticism and learned about Hellenism and learned about Roman Reformism. I still have friends in those communities. I still like to talk to them and connect with them and all that because they're great friends and they got great personalities. So when I, so I, I did, I did uh, Kemeticism for a while, and during the time that I was in Kemeticism, I encountered people of color that actually believes that because of the color of their skin and because of what kind of blood they have, that they're the only ones allowed to 
honor these gods, have altars to them, all that type of stuff. And that really made me kind of wonder. What is going on with this community? And then I said, okay, all right, I'll leave Kemeticism because I don't want to be accused of cultural appropriation, though, I, though later on I found out you can't appropriate dead cultures. Then I went into Hellenism, and I, did, I was part of the Timothy J. Alexander uh, Forum, which was full of really great people. Um, Timothy J. Alexander no longer writes, he's no longer part of the Hellenic community. And I had no problems with that. I still have a lot of friends in the Hellenic community, and every now and then I will post a video. Um, I'm still paying my statues uh, because it's a fun thing to do, and I like to do stuff with my hands. Especially in the era of COVID, you have to do stuff with your hands or you're going to go stir crazy. So I'm like, okay, great. And then Yassi gets recognized, or, or Hellenism gets recognized as an actual religion, and the nationalists come out in hordes. Scary. So, then I decided to check out heathenism. Okay. If I thought I was having issues with race in Kemeticism, it was nothing to heathenism. So, I had recently had bought a book off Kindle. No, not Kindle. No, it wasn't Kindle. It was Nook. I had a Nook reader, people. I had a Nook reader. I was. I felt like I was on top of the world. I owned a Nook. And I actually downloaded um, the uh, Essen uh, Essential Guide to... Um, was it uh, Heathenism? Or no, Essential Guide to Also True. That was it. And I made a comment about, oh, I just bought this book. And I found out the author was actually a member of the group. And I'm like, okay, great. Wow, I can ask her questions. When you start in heathenism, in certain groups in heathenism, when you start asking questions about the gods, about heathenism, all this type of stuff, there are some groups that do not like newbies. They don't. They don't like noobs. They don't like, they don't like fresh meat, whatever you want to call it. They don't like that. They don't. They will. They will make it very abundantly clear that they do not like people that are new to heathenism. And Heathen Talk actually addressed this issue about how jerks and assholes are driving people away from heathenism that actually want to practice. They want to be part of a kindred that wants to be part of a community. They drive them away because they're assholes. And I was very glad they addressed that. Uh, if I must know, that particular streaming group has been gone for about three years now. Yeah. I used to, I used to listen to them. I try to, used to, I try to listen to them every week, but if I'm not, I generally caught them a couple of days later. Especially when I started working. So, um... So they really helped me a lot in understanding heathenism and understanding um, the role of the heathen and, and all that. So I left them because of the fact that I was being treated like, oh yeah, you used to be in Wicca and you used to do all these different paths. It's called trying to find where I belong in some community because they didn't know my situation and they acted like they did know my situation which they did not know my situation the situation was that i had a narrow-minded mother who was who was starting to become what she would later on become in, down the road and then of course if you try to get any kind of help from pagans that live by themselves they quit the thing they say basically is suck it up and don't practice paganism because you live with home with your mom and your mom makes the rules no matter if you're the one who actually pays all the bills. 
So that really pissed me off. So I had no community. I had no support system. I had nothing. And I got really, really pissed off. And I was one of those really angry pagans who basically hated just everyone. Hey, great way to make someone angry is basically be a pagan and be an asshole. And basically say, oh, I'm better than you are because I live by myself. So I sort of decided I'm not going to be part of any kind of community because there's no support in the pagan community if you're not living by yourself. So a couple of years later, I moved in, I, me, me, my mother, and my brother moved down here to, um, to Kentucky. And, uh, you know, I didn't have a job and all this type of stuff. And I was still interested. The only community that I really felt like had my back was the comedic community and the Hellen Hellenistic community or the Hellenic community. Um, I knew right away that there was people that were speaking out against this nationalism that was popping up and definitely, definitely making it clear that we don't approve of racism and cometicism, which I thought was really great. And I, and I really, really, really hope that at some point in the future, anyone who's interested in worshiping the Egyptian gods or the Greek gods can be welcomed even even in Greece and in, you know, cyberspace. So, so I found work and I bought my first statue, which was that of Ra, which my cat promptly sprayed on, which I wanted to kill him. Um, I named my, actually I named my cat Loki, which fit him perfectly. So I tried to practice some form of paganism, kept on being told over and over again, you got to get rid of the statues and stuff like that. And meanwhile, my mother was able to buy whatever she wanted and I was not able to buy whatever I wanted and that I felt like was unfair. So my brother left home for a bit, went to see his dad, um, and I took over his bedroom, which was really cool. Um, so I actually took his dresser and turned it into a pagan shrine. <clears throat> and I actually did a series of videos around Yule, where I was doing the 12 days of Yule. And this was before I got myself the job I'm currently at now. So, um, so when, so fast forward real fast to last year when mother passed away and I was now free to seek out community and to be a practicing pagan. And just like before, when my mother was alive, I kept on bouncing around, bouncing around, bouncing around annoying the heck out of myself and not the people that were watching my videos. And finally, mm, two months ago, I actually was on this Elemino, I, I can't pronounce it, and I had posted a question. I said, you know, my mother passed away in February. She was very anti-pagan, very anti-whatever. And I, and I have been jumping around on different paths, trying to find the path that fit me. And I thought at first I was going to be criticized and ridiculed for doing this. And I actually found people that said, hey, I did that as well until I found the path I'm currently on now. And then I made a mention, well, the runes really interest me, which they do. There's just something about the runes I'm just drawn to. And the guy and this guy gets on this is, well, maybe you should consider the Norse gods. And I'm like, okay. So I bought my Norsi, which was the goddess Hell, 
and my altar has been growing ever since. It is actually the fanciest altar that I have had. So, um, <clears throat> so during the nearly year that I have been looking for community, I have come across this very, very, um, relevant pattern. And that is believing that <clears throat> how we do it is the only way to do it. Now, since I have not actually been to heathen gatherings for the main reason that they've all been canceled because of COVID, um, Sorry, but I do definitely want to join the troth. Um, you, you see this a lot. So, so um, the um, the heathen talk had said that um, that um, I think I mentioned this before in the video that there are hundreds of ways to be a heathen but there are as many ways to do it wrong. And basically, it is a concept of that 50-50, there's a chance that you're doing a ritual correctly or you're not doing a ritual correctly is the other 50%. And, you know, and when I have been able to do, you know, uh, I back in November, I allowed videos long within 15 minutes so I can stream now and I actually did engage the streaming um, part of my channel it kind of boils my blood that this is even an issue you know okay all right so look we look we all had to make changes <clears throat> in how we did things and there was whole articles about how, um, about how, you know, pagans who are now comfortable being around other pagans and in groups and covens, now they're going back to being solitary and it's like going right back in the broom closet. Me personally, I didn't see that being an issue. Um, I was already a solitary Norse pagan and I didn't really see the issue. Now... At some point in the future, as I said, I really want to join the troth. At some point in the future, I'm definitely going to make the trip out there to go to troth uh, bloats. Because I really want to see how they do things in an inclusive uh, and non-racist manner. Um... The big issue, of course, is, you know, getting that time off. Of course, if I if I request it months and months and months in advance, there's a definite good chance I'll get those days off. But that's that's the thing. But this this. this um, belief that there's only one way to do things, one way to believe, one way this, one way that. That is a problem in the pagan community, uh, especially in like the um, heathen community in the, uh, well, yeah, the, the heathen community. And of course, in the Roman Roman uh, pagan community, it's actually backed by historical account that it had to be word perfect, and so that's a little bit different. But when we go and we burn our incense, when we sing praises to the gods, when we pour out libations to the Desir, 
when we pour out libations to the land rights, to the house spirits, to the spirits of the sea, to the spirits that live in the rivers and the streams. We are, and it doesn't matter how you're doing this. I want to make this very clear. It doesn't matter how you're honoring the gods. The fact is you're honoring them, period, is an amazing thing. To live in a country where we are free to practice our religion, we're free to scream out the name of the gods in a Middle Eastern country in the middle of the desert, is absolutely amazing. And, I mean, my mother at one time was like, oh, you know, having a Christian nation would be great. Then I said, what branch of Christianity, what happened if you're the wrong kind of Christian and they lock you away or they execute you or something like that? Which happened in the past. If you were the wrong kind of Christian, you were executed for it. <clears throat> and then suddenly she wasn't a fan of that. <laughs> um... But it is one of those things that we as pagans have to be very aware of. That, you know, there are eclectic pagans. I consider to me I consider myself to be a Norse eclectic pagan. Um, you know, I do meditation and I like crystals and stones and I like to burn various different kinds of incense. I have a bast on my altar on a boat. It's, it's an incense burner. But the thing about it is, is that we're all putting up with the same kind of bullshit that we have to put up with, with people that are outside of the community going and saying, oh, you know, um... Oh, you know, uh, what you're doing is wrong, you're going to go to hell, all this other stuff. We have to put up with that. And, you know, we can go and try to educate people and say, you know, we don't allow 70-year-olds into covens, we don't do this, we don't do that. But people already have their minds made up of who we are as people, who we are as a community. This right belief, is something that is so apparent in mainstream religions. The right way to do things, the right actions, the right this, the right that. <clears throat> and it's something that we have to put up with. But it, it really gets me upset when they're saying, oh, there are, you know, hundreds of ways to practice heathenry, but there is as many ways to do it wrong. How I practice my Norse paganism is my own business. And I have gotten fed up to the point, just like with people, customers at my job, um, I'm up to here with people telling me, oh, that's not how it was done over a thousand years ago. I, I am fed up with it. Is something that I encountered when I was in my late 20s. I am now 41 and I am too old for this shit. So how I practice is my own business. But I come on here and I do videos to help people who might be interested in practicing an eclectic Norse path or people that just want information about the gods and stuff like that. Um, I'm actually going to be working with my brother for him to help me to use like footage. I know I feel like, oh, that's copyright violation. But like using footage under the Fair Use Act to kind of demonstrate about the god about the gods and talk about them and stuff like that. Kind of make it more fun and more interactive. And I'm definitely going to be working on a channel opening 
um, but I'm still going to keep it on this channel. And I'm actually going to be using a, um, I'm actually going to be using, um, a, a try to use, like, a channel name or something, I don't know. Um, but I really want to keep it on this channel because I just don't have the energy to create a new channel or whatever. I don't know. I think, I don't know. Um, I, I'll have I'll have to decide in the next couple months if I actually want to open up a heathen channel when I'm already doing heathen content on this channel. I, I probably just won't because it's just too much energy to actually produce, to get a new channel up and to get subscribers and to get content people like. I just really, I'm just going to keep it on this channel. So this will be my heathen channel <clears throat> and I'll just keep all my old, um, my all my old videos and all that type of stuff but yeah so uh please let me know what you think about what i'm saying and i will see you guys around so until next time may you be happy healthy most importantly be safe and hail to the gods bye